Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the SD Core Techinar. Uh, so uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our SD Core project to you today. We announced the launch of SD Core on June 24th. SD Core builds on the open source 5G and 4G disaggregated mobile core and is optimized for emerging private 5G and enterprise use cases. So let me start with a quick background to set up the context. Even though SD Core as a project was launched very recently, mobile core to the ONF community is nothing new. Indeed, we have been developing OMEC, our release 13 and beyond mobile core for a number of years now. As a project, OMEC has a technical steering team, holds regular meetings, and has an active and vibrant community. And OMEC started with seed code from Intel, Sprint, now T-Mobile, uh, and GS Lab. The project quickly gained the attention of the ONF community and our operator partners have started participating. Indeed, the TST membership includes operators. Then Deutsche Telekom, specifically T-Mobile Poland, decided to use OMEC in production to serve their new fixed mobile substitution service. The community quickly coalesced around the feature and stability requirements and went to work. And in January 20, 20, the production rollout took place. And since then, additional required features to support the use case are under active development. For example, the enablement of lawful intercept has been a fundamental feature that has since been developed. And in parallel, ONF has pulled in OMEC for Ether stack development. And as you know, Ether is an open source project within ONF that empowers 4G and 5G connectivity as a service for private enterprise networks. And on the other side of the globe, our friends at NCTU in Taiwan started developing open source 5G core under guidance from their members and their requirements. This too is an active project and as ONF we're platinum members and collaborators to it. Now, coming to SD Core, as a project, it builds on and enhances on these two projects to provide a unified dual core mobile core solution for the private enterprise and is being uh, developed with software as a service deployment and consumption in mind. SD Core is currently an ONF member only project with plans to open source the entire stack in Apache 2.0 license in the not so distant future. The first official release for SD Core is slated for Q3 of this year. So as I mentioned, SD Core uses OMEC and Free 5 gc as baseline components, and it integrates to two for dual mode operation and provides significant new functionality to optimize delivery of connectivity as a service from the hybrid cloud. It is of course possible to use SD Core to provide 4G only or 5G only connectivity uh, using standard 3GPP interfaces. In order to optimize for the hybrid cloud and to support emerging industry 4.0 use cases, SD Core includes multiple user plane functions to handle different classes of enterprise traffic. We have a P4-based UPF uh, that offloads to packet processing and forwarding operations to a programmable edge fabric to achieve significant performance with much higher bandwidths, significantly lower latencies, and highly predictable and very low jitter. Uh, but this comes at a relatively modest number of devices um, and flows. A containerized, highly scalable solution, on the other hand, in parallel to this, provides high performance by leveraging acceleration technologies like TPDK. NSD Core also includes a third UPF, a 5G UPF, that is being developed by the ecosystem towards the support of telco networks, providing all necessary features and interfaces, as well as uh, the operational scale. Now, all of the components of SD Core, both all, uh, the user planes as well as the control planes go through continuous automated testing towards hardening scale and availability. Indeed, SD Core has been serving the operational Ether pilot network over the last two years, con contributing to its already existing uh, multiple nines availability. 
So as I have mentioned, the 4G components of SG Core are actively in production with DT, and an outdoor trial for dual mode operation is slated for the, uh, for the end of this month, enabling an operationalized 4G and 5G network with disaggregated ORAN-based commercial small cells. More on this towards the end of this talk. SD Core is being developed with a cloud-based deployment and consumption model as its foundation. It has a rich and extensible set of APIs to allow for runtime configurability of subscriber management, access management, session management, and network slicing management. And this current configuration may be conducted via ONF's runtime operation role, uh, we call that ROC uh, platform, directly for consumption as a cloud managed service, or the APIs could be used by third-party automation and management platforms. So to enable a cloud-based managed 4G, 5G connectivity service, as I mentioned, SD Core provides a rich set of APIs. These APIs are designed to provide telemetry data and also accept configuration updates. Uh, from third-party applications and portals. So consequently, it is possible for the third-party applications to develop automated closed-loop control processes by continuously tracking uh, the connectivity state and modifying SD core configuration using simple knobs to sustain the desired operational quality. ONF's ROC includes built-in adapters for SD Core to translate its monitoring and configuration APIs to customer and operator portals, as well as third-party applications with corresponding levels of abstraction. ROC uses RBAC to control the access of mobile core APIs. And operators can use these APIs to provision subscribers and their associated access and connectivity policies. SD Core APIs can also be used to control the runtime configuration of network functions. The management of a network slice specifically may require establishment of a new slice in runtime, which potentially required, uh, requires instantiation of new SD Core components. ROC handles this via its interface with the cloud and container management platform on which SD Core runs. SD Core's telemetry APIs are also used to continually monitor network status and to generate alerts for the network operator. And these APIs are extensible and they continue to evolve as new use cases, new deployments, and ecosystem uh, requirements materialize. The level of disaggregation uh, and associated optimizations achieved for each component of its 4G and 5G control plane makes SD Core suitable for a wide variety of deployment options. These optimizations include the capability for the 4G and 5G control planes to oversee many user plane functions, potentially instantiated at geographically diverse locations. It is possible to deploy all components of SD Core co-located at an edge cloud or a central cloud for private consumption. But it is also possible to distribute the components of SD Core across multiple clouds, edge and central, to deliver a cloud-managed multi-tenant connectivity service. So in this distributed deployment option, SD Core's control plane will run on a central hyperscaler cloud and control multiple user planes running on different on-premises, uh, potentially serving distinct customers. In this deployment, the 4G and the 5G control plane functions can scale as necessary. Each customer site can have more than one UPF deployed depending on the use cases and network slices configured. Operators can also decide to deploy UPFs in the central cloud for certain customers. Uh, uh, and their uh, and corresponding use cases where latency and data privacy is not as big a concern. SD Core brings in the flexibility to define network slices for each customer in such a way that one deploys a distinct user plane function for each slice and instantiates the various components of the solution at the customer edge or in the central cloud 
as needed and best suited. SD Core's hybrid cloud deployment is an important enabler for a managed 4G, 5G connectivity service, where each customer site may be deployed to serve a different set of use cases and may have different types of underlying cloud environments. The 4G, 5G core control planes running on the central cloud have been designed and optimized to support these distributed edge sites, which are spread potentially across different locations across the world. And the ST core control plane uses PFCP to communicate with the UPFs at these edge sites. And the hybrid cloud deployment architecture has been optimized to handle the variability in, in encounter delays, communicating with the remote edge sites, and is equipped to handle potential packet losses and retransmissions to support a multi-tenant distributed geography deployment. So the SD core architecture uh, enables the following distinct features. Uh, the architecture is fully disaggregated uh, and is composed of containerized components. The solution enables 4G, 5G standalone, and 5G non-standalone connectivity. The platform is configurable in runtime via an extensive set of API. And it is consumable as a cloud managed service. All SD core components follow 3GPP standards naturally to interface with others, as well as with the external networks and systems. As such, components can be consumed independently and be used as part of a multi-vendor mobile core deployment as well. SD Core's 5G core network functions are 3GPP release 1503 compliant, and they include the access and mobility management function, the AMF, the session management function, the SMF, the authentication server function, the AUSF, policy control function, the PCF, the unified data management function, the UDM, and the unified um, data repository, UDR, um, as well as the network repository function, NRF, network slice selection function, NSSF, the app, uh, and the application function, AF. And in the near future, we will add to this list the unstructured data storage function, the UDSF, for cloud native enablement. These functions use service-based interfaces to communicate with one another. These interfaces, uh, as you all know, use a well-defined REST interface using HTTP2 as the application protocol. SD Core's 4G control plane functions are 3GPP release 13 compliant and include the mobility management entity, the MME, the serving and packet uh, data network gateway control, the SP gateway C, the home subscriber service, the HSS, and the policy and charging rules function, the PCRF. Um, SD Core's 4G core is designed to have a CUPS compliant architecture and uses the 3GPP packet forwarding control pro protocol, the PFCP, to implement this CUPS. In several 3GPP release 15 updates to PFCP specs are supported in the SD Core implementation, uh, even towards 4G, to provide better operational control. SD Core's 4G control plane has been enhanced to provide functional support for 5G non-standalone operation, uh, the 3X operation, with compliant E node Bs and G node Bs, as per 3GPP specifications. So specifically, uh, these related enhancements include the support for the extended bearer rates um, on the required interfaces, as well as the 5G NSA attributes in the HSS. So I mentioned that SD Core has multiple user plane functions and uh, each deployment may select one or more to be instantiated for configurable sets of network slices. So we have a P4 based dual core UPF optimized for uh, private enterprise deployments. We have a containerized dual core UPF optimized for uh, again, private enterprise deployments as well as a containerized dual core UPF 
optimize for various high scale mobile network operator use cases. Now the dual core UPFs can communicate with both 4G and 5G control planes and thus can serve both 4G and 5G sessions at the same time. The dual core user plane functions that are optimized for private enterprise deployments are themselves implemented with a disaggregated architecture, as you can see in the slide. And, and uh, the components are the control interface function, which is the PFC and uh, the packet processing and forwarding function. The two dual core UPFs, both P4 based and containerized, share a common control interface function, the PFCPA. But of course, the packet processing and forwarding functions are implementation specific. Now, uh, the uh, packet processing uh, and forwarding function for the P4 based dual core UPF includes um, the following components. We have a UPF specific P4 application running on a P4 programmable fabric that specifies exactly how packet forwarding and processing, including GTP tunneling encapsulation and encapsulation should be executed for both downlink and uplink. ONS SDN controller ONOS that installs table entries onto the switch based on the information received from the PFCP agent. And the UP4 application running on OS that communicates with the PFCP agent on the northbound interface and engages on OS to install the forwarding rules to the programmable switch using P4 runtime. The UP4 application acts as a logical pipeline for the PFCP agent and hence abstracts um, it from the actual forwarding pipeline. And last but not least, a buffering module that is used to buffer the incoming downlink packets towards a device that is either in idle mode or, or as it is going through a handover. The buffering module interacts with the switch on the layer four interface to receive packets for buffering and also to drain the packets once the UE um, is back in active mode or the handover process is completed. And this module also notifies ONOS to signal the PFCP agent when the first packet for an idle user is received. Now the second uh, packet processing and forwarding function is the containerized dual, uh, dual core UPF. And this has been developed on the Berkeley extensible software switch, the BES architecture. As, as a containerized software switch. BES has been designed to be extensible and highly performant. It is composed of a BES daemon, a BES controller, and multiple BES modules. The PFCP agent uses gRPC to communicate with the BES-based packet processing and forwarding function. This implementation runs entirely on the user space and binds directly to the network interfaces using the PDK, uh, bypassing the kernel. These two packet processing and forwarding function implementations really serve complementary purposes. The P4 based implementation enables a very high performance processing and forwarding, very high aggregate throughput, effectively at the switch line rate. Uh, it can go up to over three terabits per second for a current P4. Um, very, very low latency in the order of one to 1.5 microseconds and very low and predictable jitter in the order of four nanoseconds for a limited number of connections. Um, further, this implementation brings fine grain visibility uh, to 4G and 5G traffic with INT. This in turn enables the capability to monitor, detect, and rectify issues on the data plane using verification and closed loop control, and thus providing a highly reliable and highly secure connectivity service. But as I mentioned, this implementation has upper limits on vertical scaling, as well as the level of granularity available for differentiated QoS services due to the hardware limitations of today's P4-based programmable switches. To support a virtually unlimited number of connections, but with relatively more modest 
performance requirements, one can make use of the best-based packet processing and forwarding, which is effectively a software-based microservice. This implementation uses SRIOV to scale the physical NIC interface to multiple virtual interfaces, and thus can help uh, more network isolation and a very highly scalable infrastructure. And using DPDK, this implementation can scale the number of ingress and egress queues per user and provide highly granular data flow classification for differentiated QoS. It can provide service up to 1 million concurrent users with one instance that uses eight CPUs and can vertically scale for even higher densities. It can achieve an aggregate throughput of around 100 gigabits per second. So uh, we have been mentioning network slicing. Um, of course, network slicing is one of the most important features of the 5G core network. It helps in isolating the network for various business and use cases. In the disaggregated service-based architecture of 5G core, this isolation may include only the UPF or also a subset of the control plane services, such as the SMF. However, the mobile core control functions that are responsible for managing user mobility, user authentication, and network slicing itself need to remain centralized across all slices. SD Core provides the necessary APIs to manage network slices using external agents. ONF's ROC, pre-integrated with SD Core, allows for this central management via portals as well as automation. If the management requires instantiation of a new UPF and or a new SMF instance, ROC oversees this by interacting with the edge cloud or hyperscale container management service to provision such new network function instances. Operators can create new slices based on criteria such as uh, uh, isolating devices allowed to access specific packet data networks or edge applications or keeping all devices or flows with the same QoS classification grouped under one slice. The network slice selection is achieved through 3GPP specified network functions like network slice selection function and network repository function. The NSSF helps in mapping the device and or flow to a specific slice and steering the corresponding traffic um, to the right set of uh, network elements. SD Core's 5G implementation natively includes both NSSF and NRF for slice selection. Now, uh, SD Core is indeed a tightly integrated component of the Ether stack. Ether is ONF's 4G, 5G connected edge cloud platform that provides mobile connectivity and edge cloud services for distributed, um, uh, uh, for distributed enterprise networks, all provisioned and securely managed from a central cloud. Ether is a deeply programmable service, um, top down and end to end. And in this capacity, programmability to the edge cloud fabric with SD fabric uh, and to the RAN with SD RAN and to the core with SD core um, is key uh, in, in Ether. And Ether coordinates the end-to-end -end programmability using its runtime operational control module. Ether is a cloud native platform. As such, all of the tightly integrated components, including SD Core, are containerized. Now, in this context, SD Core empowers the 4G, 5G connectivity as a service in the Ether network architecture. Along with central Ether management, the SD Core control plane runs in the central cloud and controls multiple SD Core user plane components running at each Ether edge site. SD Core's APIs are exposed to ROC to enable highly programmable and configurable connectivity for Ether customers. 
Ether as well as each of the component platforms, ST Core, ST RAN, and ST Fabric, are all designed to run on bare metal and also on any hyperscaler cloud platform. Ether includes a sophisticated and automated CI CD and GitOps pipeline, and SD Core fully leverages that. This pipeline gives us the capability to exercise infrastructure as code. Using the CI branch, Ether developers, including the SD Core developers, can continuously commit code, which goes through automated um, unit testing. Once reviewed, the repos are updated and then system level tests then take place to ensure that a new update does not negatively impact the end-to-end -end performance. In parallel, the GitOps branch uh, to our continuous integration pipeline uh, allows the operator uh, operations team to establish and update infrastructure and application configurations towards automated deployments. The developer team uh, then uh, contribute to the continuously upgraded and hardened um, component images and corresponding deployment manifests in a unified manner. And these images, manifests, and infrastructure and application configurations are then collectively used for continuous delivery and deployment. On this front, the automated infrastructure configuration updates empower us to treat infrastructure as code. So what is next with um, SD Core? As you know, cloud native is an approach to building and running applications that exploit um, the advantages of the cloud computing model. SD Core's 5G core is in the process of, of being migrated towards uh, true cloud native. It already has the fundamental design that leveraged the cloud native principles um, to fully utilize and advantages of cloud native. But uh, what we are specifically uh, doing right now is we are moving towards using stateless and loosely coupled software-based microservices. And these uh, state, uh, stateless and loosely coupled software is appropriate for um, Kubernetes container environments, as they provide efficient support for failover handling, um, scaling in and out, um, uh, and uh, seamless upgrades. And this approach also improves reusability by minimizing dependencies between microservices. So in the cloud native design that we are marching towards, SD Core will use the unstructured data storage function, the UDSF, to centrally manage the state of all of the now stateless network functions. And also centrally managed will be the subscriber-related information, the subscription data, policy data, structured data for exposure, as well as the application data on the centralized um, unified data repository, the UDR. Um, we will also continuously extend our API reach uh, with, uh, with the SD Core project. So uh, we, are, uh, we have already developed some baseline dual core APIs for monitoring and control, but we will be extending on these. And ultimately, uh, the end goal being, uh, from a monitoring perspective, the necessary APIs for all of troubleshooting, as well as the SLA monitoring in the form of QoS and slicing performance. Um, and from a control API perspective, uh, the capability to uh, externally configure and control subscriber management, QoS slicing, and access control management. And, uh, and of course, um, as with uh, every other ONF project, we will continuously increase our test coverage with SD Core. Um, and the goal is to increase our multiple nines availability towards uh, the ultimate goal of five nines availability. Um, and uh, with migration towards true cloud native, we will be able to uh, support a truly resilient uh, architecture with automated healing uh, and 
and and of also of course uh, scale in and and uh, scale out uh, both in the number of operations per second as well as uh, traffic too. And I also mentioned in the beginning of this talk that we are just about to uh, kickstart a field trial with Deutsche Telekom in Berlin. Um, this is going to be an ongoing operation uh, in Berlin. And all of the components of Ether, including SDRAN, uh, with uh, controlling a fully disaggregated ORAN compliant small cell uh, from, uh, from our partners, um, as well as the uh, associated X apps, uh, the SD fabric controlling the P4 based uh, X fabric, and SD core uh, enabling connectivity for both 5G standalone and 4G uh, mobile handsets uh, will be in play uh, in this trial. So even though we just launched SD Core as a project, uh, it is already a vibrant uh, project with uh, numerous uh, ecosystem partners uh, contributing and, and leveraging SD Core and its components. So at this stage, um, I'd like to invite ONF members to participate, collaborate, and adopt this exciting new open source platform. The, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, the project currently is licensed under the ONF member-only software license. Members wishing to be granted access to the repo uh, should, should really contact uh, Denise and, and, and Michelle um, or uh, email uh, at membership at opennetworking.org. And uh, as for non-members who find the SD Core project interesting and exciting and want to have access and contribute to, um, I'd like to just ask that please consider becoming an ONF member. So with that, um, I'd like to conclude today's take it out. Um, thank you for your time and uh, I'm ready to answer any questions you may have. Since SD Core uses Free 5G Core as base and Free 5G Core is currently Foss, what is the ONF policy regarding upstreaming any changes developed in the context of SD Core back to Free 5G Core? Great question. So some of the features that uh, that are uh, of importance to the Free 5G C community, we, we are going to be contributing back. Uh, but uh, the two projects are going to continue uh, being handled in parallel. Uh, the SD core solution supports the um, um, the SSC one, two, three modes as defined by three GPP. Um, the short answer is yes. 